Hi, um, my name is Jane Stevens, and I am um, doing a video, my last section of my um, language project. And this video, um, I was, I am creating a video discussing the impact of language impairment um, on reading development, and including one intervention that I found. So, um, in, in doing this research and, and learning about this, I actually found a lot of great information and I'm, I'm glad that I chose this topic because as a future reading specialist and realizing how often language impairments are, um, can be part of um, reading difficulties, I, it, it just made me aware how important this research is. Um, so I found that speech and language disorders are among the most common developmental conditions in early childhood, affecting 4% to 10% of children. Um, there's a lot of risk factors for language impairments, um, one being male and another being low socioeconomic status. Um, research has also shown that 50% or more of children with language impairments go on to have reading, disab reading disabilities in the primary or secondary grades, and that's, that's huge. Um, and research also suggests that during the preschool years, the pro most prominent sign of potential for reading disabilities is the presence of a developmental language impairment. So those statistics were pretty, pretty um, eye-opening. Um, Children with speech and language disorders are at higher risk for reading difficulties because they have poor auditory, phonological, and verbal memory skills. Uh, according to the simple view of reading, a very, very basic description of reading is that reading is composed of word recognition and language comprehension. Um, so students with language difficulties um, are really struggling with that, um, with both of those. They struggle with phon phonological awareness, which is the ability to match sounds to letters. Um, and then that knowledge then helps them phonetically decode words. So that's a struggle for them. Um, they also struggle with phonological memory, which is being able to store that phonological information in your memory and then retrieve it when you need to. And um, Phonological retrieval is another thing that they really struggle with, which is just kind of correctly naming items. Um, it was, and since um, phonological awareness is such a big problem for these kiddos, that ability to um, recognize that sounds go with letters, um, that's the inter intervention that I came up with. Um, and one of the really good things that I found was um, Elkonian boxes. So I have one here. I just kind of made one on my own. But, um, and basically what a parent or a student would could do, um, you could use Legos, um, you could use any object, and kind of as you have them work on a word, like I have the word cat here, As they say the word cat, um, they could just they could use the Legos to um, represent each sound. So it would be like k, a, t. So k a t. Um, they don't have to have the Elkonian box. They could just use Legos or M and M's or any other object in the house. Just kind of helping to um, enhance that phonological awareness that, like each that sounds go with letters. So like, you know, we could just use the Lego k, a, t. Um, I also found in my research that early intervention is extremely important and helpful for long-term reading success. So the earlier you can find um, the impairment and get start helping the student with it, the better off they'll be long-term. So the this intervention that I just did, the Elkonian boxes are just using the Legos to help with that sound discrimination. Um, that's can be for a preschooler, it could be all the way up into, you know, a first or second grader certainly could use it if they were still struggling. Um, some other things, just because language is so important. So there were some other things that I found that just parents or early educators could help with 
just in continuing to develop those those phonological skills and those language skills. Um, one was just to imitate your child or the child. Um, so if they're making noises or babbling or anything like that, just do it back to them. Um, that helps them recognize what they're doing is important and that it matters, um, that they're being heard. It also kind of facilitate, facilitates that pragmatic turn-taking, you know, I'm, I make the noise and mom makes the noise or, or whatever. Um, it also helps them, they'll imitate you, which if you start having more complex language, they will imitate you and start having that more complex language skills too. Um, another one is just interpreting, and I'm sure most parents probably do this at some point, but, and don't realize they're developing language skills, but, um, you know, if a, if a child is pointing to, uh, you know, apple juice, just saying to them, oh, you want apple juice, and just helping them kind of start to make that connection of, oh, that thing over there is apple juice. That just helps develop that. Um, and a, another one, the last one that I um, use a lot in my first grade classroom, and definitely parents could do easily at home, is just labeling things in your house or at, in the classroom, like label, you know, labels of milk, put a little label that says milk. Um, label anything in your house that um, can have a label on it. <laughs> and it, again, it just fosters that, um, that connection between objects and that there's letters that come together to make words that represent those objects. So um, I think that's it. I gave my reasons for um, or talked about language what language impairment, how it affects reading development, and I came up with an intervention uh, and also gave some tips for parents. So thank you.